Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romney. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism and narcissistic relationships, healing from these relationships. And now let's ask the question, how do smart people get stuck in narcissistic relationships? This is a question I get all the time. I actually think it's the wrong question because getting stuck in narcissistic relationships or not getting stuck in relationships, it's not about smart. Smart doesn't mean much when it comes to matters of the heart and to matters of trauma bonding. Narcissistic relationships make so much sense in hindsight. Everybody can see the red flags when you play it backwards. The manipulations are clear as day, but at the time they are happening in real time, and you are a human being who may actually love or care about this person or who wants to remain connected or attached to someone, this isn't about smart. And frankly, if you want to stay on this sort of this line of smart, Smart people potentially could be at more risk for getting stuck. Why is that? Because they are better at making excuses. Smart people are going to be even more focused on working and seeing all the angles, accounting for the narcissistic person's history, their stress levels, their day. Smart people may feel compelled to do a deeper dive into the what did I do wrong or fall into the idea that both people are bringing something to the table in a relationship and may be more likely to blame themselves. In fact, when I speak to so-called smart groups of people, sort of people who are academic -y or ultra successful, they are the ones who are actually the most resistant to the ideas around the asymmetries, the one-sidedness, and the unfixability that we often observe in narcissistic relationships. Smart people are often the last ones to be convinced that narcissistic relationships don't change, can't change, as though it is too simplistic to believe that it's just that. So in fact, the argument could be made that smart people are the ones who do get stuck in these relationships because it feels defeatist and single-minded to believe that narcissistic people cannot change. And this is often in contrast to people who are stuck for practical reasons. And that's that lineup of minor children, money, culture, safety. These are people who are stuck like this, who may actually see it more clearly than the smart people, but there's no easy path out for them. And despite the suffering and the misery of staying, leaving can raise even more issues that have long-term ramifications that they cannot take on, ranging from physical danger to financial ruin to children in harm's way. These folks will often stay in these relationships because there is no other option. And from a healing perspective, as hard as it is, the work becomes for the people who are in these practical stuck circumstances to see the dynamics clearly, that it is not their fault, that it is deeply unjust and unfair, that disengaging as much as possible is the path forward and to divest from any idea that the narcissistic person can change or that you are responsible for their behavior. Keep in mind that of course, the smart factor and the practical factor can come together in one person's story all the time. And that's even worse because even if a person wanted to leave, it's too difficult and there is no easy solution, which is maddening for the so-called smart person who may face the one-two punch of trauma bonding and being able to make some really complex justifications for what is happening. Those mental shifts are harder for the smart folks who see possibility in everyone. In fact, some of my greatest frustrations come from speaking to audiences of people who want to know about narcissism, but haven't really been in narcissistic relationships. So they approach all of this analytically. They go with what they know about human nature and human behaviors, 
and say, well, Dr. Devasala, obviously all people have within them the possibility of change. So isn't it inaccurate to assert that narcissistic people cannot change? And don't the people in these relationships have free will and have to take some responsibility for staying in an unhealthy circumstance? And as I try not to roll my eyes and as I scream inside my head, it becomes clear that trying to talk about trauma bonding to people who have never been there is really hard. And I patiently unpack it for them. But when you try to apply surgical and analytical thought to the bodily felt sense of being attached to someone who hurts you, there's no intellectual work around there. But it also illuminates for me the hellscape of enabling that so many survivors have to go through. I get it. If you haven't been through it, you don't get it. I recently met someone who politely asked what I did. I explained it. I defined narcissism, the person listened politely and said thoughtfully, I don't think I have ever met someone narcissistic. I have to say this person was sort of young. I'm not sure if that, if that was true, but they had sort of a remote look in their eyes when I was talking as though I was, as though I was talking about flying pigs or cats who can play the piano. Like it sounds like an interesting idea, but I don't really believe you. So for those of you who have traditionally thought of yourselves as a smart person and look back and wonder what went wrong, this is one of those times where smart is not as useful as being more attuned to yourself and having the humility to recognize that not every problem can be solved or thought through, but rather sometimes we have to feel our problems we have to address our fear and to recognize that some of our simplistic assumptions, for example, that everybody can change, aren't true or certainly not enough to make a difference. And then to dig into how self-blame and fear get confused with love in these relationships. Folks, getting stuck in narcissistic relationships isn't about smart or not smart. It has nothing to do with it. It has to do with the most vulnerable part of yourself being played upon and preyed upon or of old wounds being reactivated. In fact, when you think you are smart enough to think your way through one of these situations, that actually isn't smart. So I hope that's helpful. And again, I just want to say one thing. When I say smart, for those of you who got this far, I don't necessarily mean IQ smart, book smart, trivia smart. Just that sense of, I thought I was smart enough to know, to not get played. This is a lot more complicated than that. Thanks again.